All right. The deal is, is that um, no matter no matter what happens, if you program this, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between fact or fiction. It does not know the difference. Your conscious mind knows the difference. The subconscious mind does not. I'm gonna prove it to you. Your subconscious mind, no, your your conscious mind knows when you're dreaming. Well, when you when you're dreaming, you're not in the realm of the conscious. Your sub your, your, your subconscious. Dreams come out of your subconscious. Now, if your subconscious mind knew the difference between fact and fiction, then why do you get scared in a nightmare? You get scared in a nightmare because at that time you believe it's real. Right? Exactly. You'll even wake up in the conscious world and still your body's sweating and everything. You know why? Because your subconscious mind was in charge during the dream state and it reacted like, like your dreams was real. It doesn't know the difference between fact and fiction. Your conscious mind does. Your co conscious mind is what chooses what you dwell upon. <clears throat> okay? If I say something to you and you don't like it, you reject it. So you immediately start thinking about something else. But if I tell you something that you like, you remember it. You write it down. You repeat it to yourself. Alright? The more you repeat it, the more imprints it goes upon, on, it imprints upon the subconscious mind. That's where you want it to be. Because when it imprints upon the subconscious mind, guess what? That's where your paradigms are formed. Now, your, your conscious mind does not form your paradigms. It takes in the information. If it, whatever imprints upon the subconscious mind becomes part of your paradigm or how you see things. Okay, so, the whole process is this. You have to choose what thoughts you're gonna let imprint upon your subconscious mind through meditation, prayer, whatever you wanna call it. All right. That's the power of this book. You get these thoughts and you repeat them over and over and over, memorize them. When you memorize them, every time you say one of them to yourself, every time you look at them, look in the mirror and say it emotionally, it prints even deeper on the subconscious mind. So instead of saying, I'm a champion, say, I am a champion, that imprints deeper. Okay, every time you say it, boom, that's an imprint. Boom, that's another imprint. Boom, that's another imprint. Like if you remember typewriters, when you were type, if you typed it one time, it has a certain, uh, it's dark like, like a one, a one time you print it. But the more you backspace, hit it again, backspace, hit it again, backspace, it imprints deeper. And the color is right. It gets to the point where if you wrote a whole page of letters, of, of, of words, but you imprint, print it one word over and over and over and over, you can look at the whole sheet of paper, but that one word will stand out. That's what you want. Because now, when your subconscious mind goes back to something, like when someone says an excuse to me, and you probably know this when people talk to me, they say something that's an excuse, almost immediately I say, excuses is the language of business. Or I'll say something, you sound like a gazelle or a sheep. There you see? Now, you know why you remember it? Because I've said it over and over and over. Exactly. That's how it works. Now, if you want, now, when you control it, now, remember, things are going to imprint on your subconscious mind all the time. But you can choose what imprints and what imprints deeper. I take, see, I have a tendency to take charge of what imprints on my mind. So I'm in my house listening to Les Brown say, yo, Jamie Colon, got you. You know, I'm in my house saying all the time, um, uh, you might not could do it, Jeff. But it is possible. That's what Les Brown says all the time. I don't want you to say you can do it. But just admit to yourself, it's possible that it can get done. It's possible that I could do it. It's possible that that could be for me. It's possible that that's going to be my big break. Just admit that to yourself. Say it enough. It imprints. Boom, boom, boom. It's not... It's not a difficult premise. Prayer. People will tell you right up front. Prayers is you say in scripture over and over and over and over and over and over. You read the Bible. They tell you, yo, read and study the Bible. What they're really saying is say it over and over and over. God commanded the Israelites when they went out of Egypt 
to rehearse, which means repeat or meditate, this in the ears of your children. The great things that God has wrought in your lives. You know why? Because the more they imprinted in their minds, guess what they believe? Exactly. There you go. And that's how they look at it. God is going to bring forth great things in my life. Why? Because he did it for my father. He did it for his father. Da -da -da -da. One percent. And that's how the process works. Now, here's the maliciousness, or not even the maliciousness. I would say the, um, the problem with the inner city or poor neighborhoods. In poor neighborhoods, what images are constantly repeated to your mind? No, 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 Miss Hunter College. What? Where are you going? No, 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 no. Liberty Street. Liberty Street. You see that one? All the way down, all the way left, all the way up. Thank you. Yep. Well, you know what, sir? Guess what? My, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> see? Over and over and over and over. The power of music is that they play the record over and over until you get to the point where you go and you... Mm -hmm. How can I? It says mostly a negative image. 100%. But the negative images that's in the inner city, <clears throat> they imprint upon the minds of the kids in the inner city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you constantly sending those images there. Mm -hmm. They don't even know how to function yeah. in an urban or a, 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 a suburban neighborhood. They don't even know how to function. Yeah. They start looking for stuff to steal. Yeah. Pretty much. Because they don't even know how to function because you've never programmed them to do. Mm. You never programmed them. It's not about color of skin. Because yeah. constitutionally, which means what we're made of, we're all the same. Yeah, of course. Yeah, more like but that. the fact of the matter is, is that you won't act the same if you've been constantly told that dark-skinned, black, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, Latina, whatever, mm -hmm. is more apt to drop out of school are more apt not to work a job, more apt not to be educated, more apt, you understand? If, if black men are constantly programmed that you are less than your Caucasian and Asian counterparts, you're gonna perform that way. Because it, it accesses if your subconscious mind that creates a belief, and belief is what you act on. I'm gonna act on the negativity that was given to me. I was told for years, you will never be nothing. And at one point, I was homeless in my life, and I wasn't nothing. See what I'm saying? So, and that's the, that's the whole of blessing of church. Because when you go into the church, you get saved. What do they tell you? You are now saved. You are a child of God. You are now a saint of the Most High. What is that doing to you? We changing the paradigm. Now you're something special. Now you're in a group. Okay, let's look at it on a negative sense. What do the Crips of Bloods tell you? You are now a blood, son. You blood, son. You, you different now. You part of it. Changing the paradigm. That's what it's all about. It's the psychology. That's what it's all about. I'll tell you right now. Most people do not keep a consistent workout ethic. Is because their paradigm will never change. Their conscious mind will say, I want to work out. But guess what their subconscious mind says, which is more powerful than your conscious mind. It's more powerful, but it still doesn't know the difference between fact and fiction. So guess what it's doing? It's constantly fighting against your, your conscious mind saying, I want to work out, I want to work out, I want to work out. You know what your subconscious mind is saying? Yeah, but you fat, you fat, you fat, you fat. So if you don't keep putting in your mind, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna work out, because the subconscious mind is gonna keep saying what it says until it's overcome. Through visualization, and check this out. Pictures imprint deeper on the subconscious mind than words do. Ooh. Ooh. Dropping, dropping jewels right now. Pictures imprint deeper on the subconscious mind than words do. The power of that, now you understand the power of visualization. Yeah. If I, I can say something to you a hundred times, but if I show you a picture ten times, it imprints deeper. That's the key. That's why you don't watch your TV. You want to get away from that. You want to get away from soap operas. You want to get away from these negative talk shows and all this kind of stuff. Why? Because they put pictures in your mind that you're meditating upon. Check this out. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. What is that? That's a picture in the mind. What do you hope for? 
you have a, if I say what do you hope for immediately a picture comes to your mind doesn't it exactly I don't know what the picture is I don't need to know but the fact of the matter is that's what faith is faith is a picture in the mind faith is created by pictures in the mind that's why the first thing God gives you when he wants you to do something is a vision 